Hi guys, if you guys have been here before, you'll know that I like weaving. But today's video is about whether or not you might like weaving too. Hi guys, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday, where we come and we talk about making time to make things. Specifically, I talk about dyeing, knitting, spinning, and weaving. And today I wanna to talk a little bit more about this idea of weaving. If you have followed me for the past couple of years, maybe you will know that I am quite obsessed with weaving. Sweet Georgia is a hand dyeing yarn company. So we make hand dyed yarns, we make hand dyed spinning fibers. So a lot of our content and a lot of our materials and everything is about knitting, crochet, how to use yarn, spinning, all of those kinds of things. But at the back of my entire life has been this, 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 this thing with weaving. That's just this weird relationship and love affair with weaving. I think I started about 2007 is when I learned how to weave. And I just sort of immediately was like, this is my thing. This is, this is what I want to do, but there are so many barriers to doing it. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit about what you might see as an apparent barrier to trying out weaving for maybe even the first time. I think in a lot of ways, knitting is super accessible. Crochet is super accessible. You get a ball of yarn, you can go to the dollar store and buy a pair of knitting needles that are literally $2. I mean, here in Richmond, we have Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store. It's a dollar, it's a yen store. Do yeah, it's a dollar store. It's a Japanese dollar store that has all this craft material available for $2 each, $1, $2 each. And so you can just get started for almost nothing. If you don't know anything about knitting, you can pick up a pair of needles, pick up some yarn and just try it. And if you don't like it, you just wasted maybe $5. Same with crochet. But with spinning and weaving, it gets to be a little bit more challenging. Like there's different kinds of equipment involved in doing these fiber arts. I remember very early on when I was obsessed with spinning and I bought some fiber online and it had arrived in the mail and I was at work and I, got my package of fiber and I didn't have my I didn't have my spindle with me I didn't have my wheel with me and so I took an eraser like a gum eraser and a pen and I sort of jabbed the pen into the eraser and I made myself a makeshift spindle at work because I was like I have to use this fiber right now and so I feel a bit like there are ways of getting around, not having the equipment. If you are just desperately like, I need to do this, there are hacks and ways around it. And so one of the things that I come up with, you know, with weaving and talking to people about weaving, lots of knitters who have tons of yarn in their yarn stash and they're like, what am I gonna do with all this yarn? I can only knit so fast. I was told from the very beginning that weaving uses more yarn faster and that was one of the appeals to me. That was one of the things that drew me in. And so I wonder about knitters who are interested in learning how to weave and seeing if there's a way that they can find out more easily, more quickly, if they're gonna like it before they lay out an investment of, you know, a hundred bucks for a rigid head loom or a hundred bucks for a frame loom or whatever it is, or even hundreds of dollars for a floor loom. How do you know you want that if you haven't even had the opportunity to try? And so what I wanted to do was to show you that you can give it a try with nothing but a piece of cardboard. <laughs> so weaving at its absolute most fundamental is just about holding one set of yarns under tension, you hold them straight and under tension, and then another yarn interlaces those yarns that are under tension. The yarns that are held under tension are called warp, and the yarn that goes in between is called weft. It's really that simple. Everything from there is just a matter of which yarns go over and which yarns go under, how are they interlaced together? All of those different ways of interlacing the yarns can produce different visual effects, different textural effects. It can make your yarn and your, your fabric become a three-dimensional structure. There's all sorts of things that you can do with different weave structures, but at the absolute simplest, all it is is yarns held this way, yarns held that way, 
and interlacing the two to make a cloth. So we can do that simply using a piece of cardboard. So what I've done here is I've taken this cardboard from, uh, it's a package of fruit snacks. They're not, there's no fruit in it. It's fruit flavored snacks. They're really terrible. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of cardboard and I'm just gonna cut some notches at the bottom. You could be a little bit more mm, precise if you wanted to, and you could take a ruler and you could measure equally, equal spaces on the top and the bottom, but I'm just gonna cut <laughs> and go a little wild here. So anyways, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start cutting a little notch and I'll cut a little no another notch that's maybe like a quarter of an inch away from that one. And I'm just gonna keep going along the bottom and I'm gonna cut notches about a quarter of an inch apart. And maybe I'm leaving about three quarters of an inch on either side, just for security. And then I'm gonna mirror, I'm flipping it over and I'm gonna mirror what I've done at the top, I'm gonna mirror at the bottom. This is all very rough. Because the idea is to make this really quick and simple. This is not an onerous, an onerous situation here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm gonna cut 16 notches. Three, four, five, 16. Okay, so I have notches cut out on the top, notches cut out on the bottom. And here I'm just gonna take some very, very simple yarn. I'm just gonna take this, this yarn that I have here, it's what I have handy. It is a 4-8 cotton. It's just like a fingering weight cotton yarn. And I'm just gonna take one end of that and I'm gonna hold it in the back, hold it to my little piece of cardboard here and then just start to thread it through the notches. And I'm gonna go from the top notch to the bottom notch. And then I'm gonna wind it around the back. And I'm gonna come through each of those notches. There's 16 notches. I'm winding it around the back at the same time. And around to the front, back, front. What we are doing here is we are basically warping a loom. Okay, so once I get to the last one, what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at the back and I'm looking at the, the tail that I started with and I'm just gonna tie those two together. I'm gonna cut off that excess yarn and I'm gonna tie the front end and the back end together. Now this is basically your warped loom, okay? So you can see it's a little bit loose. It's not perfect, okay? But what we're gonna do is just try and see what we're doing here. So now I happen to have these nice, kind of nice fancy laser cut wood yarn needles. I believe these ones came from Pearl and Loop. They are very, very cute. But you don't have to have this. You can use a yarn needle. You can use a tapestry needle. Whatever you happen to have, just use that. And then I'm gonna take this yarn that I have here. This is our Superwash Soft. So it's nice and bulky. It's a nice thick yarn here. And it comes in nice colors. I'm just gonna take sort of a handful of this. I'm gonna thread my needle. And then looking at my little cardboard loom here, I'm just gonna go in behind all my yarns. And then I'm gonna go over the next thread under the next thread, over the next thread, under with my yarn needle, just weaving back and forth through all of these yarns, okay? And then I'll just pull those through. Okay, and then when I come back around the other side, I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna go again underneath and then over, under, over, under, over, under, over, all the way across your little loom. I'm gonna pull that yarn through. Okay, and then as I'm working, I'm just gonna pull this yarn down like so, okay? And then we just keep going. Just keep going back and forth, over and under, over and under.
And then I just use my fingers to sort of pull down the yarns. If you have a fork, you can use a, a kitchen, like a dining fork. Uh, I have a fancy comb that I got from a workshop, but I think I've lost it. And so it's fine. You can just use your fingers or you can just use a fork. So you can see, this is very simple. This is very elementary. This is very basic. It's literally cost no money. And it is just one way to see if this is something that you might enjoy. Obviously, this is a very flimsy loom. These yarns are not being held under great tension because this is just a test. This is like my hack with the pen and an eraser, just to see if you can use the fiber just to see if you can use a yarn in a way that you that might be different from how you normally use it this is just another way to explore working with yarn working with color working with texture and so if this is kind of something that you might be interested in then maybe you might want to think about getting something like this like this is from pearl and loop this one is made from fiberboard and it already has all the notches cut out of it this makes it really nice and simple and easy to get started with something like that there's another one here that I got from Pearl and Loop. And this one is actually pressed cardboard. It's pressed, it's also fiberboard, I think. And my son was weaving along with me. And so this is his yellow yarn and he's weaving over, under, over, under and making some fabric here. So this is something also fun for kids to do. If you wanted to do some kind of a little craft with your kids, this is also something that they could also learn how to do. And then from there, Pearl and Loop also makes this one, which I think I've showed before, but this is the swatch maker loom. And this has notches and different holes so you can adjust how closely you want your warp threads to be set. And then from there, you can start to move on to something bigger and something that maybe, you know, is a little bit more of an investment. So this one happens to be from Woven Wood Goods, which you can find on Etsy. And she makes this beautiful loom with all of these Notch is already cut out and you can warp it up. This one is not warped up well. This is way too loose. But you can see that all you need is something like this, some kind of a frame to hold your yarns under tension. So a couple of years ago, I even just went out to the art supply store and I got myself four canvas stretchers. So you can buy these in whatever size you want, whatever length you want. And I just got four of them, hooked them all together and then warped my loom like so. I did not cut notches in here. You could if you wanted to nail some nails at regular intervals, but because I had young kids around, I didn't want to have a whole bunch of nails sticking out of this piece of wood. And so I just left it as is and um, I roughly, very roughly warped it. And uh, I abandoned the project soon after. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is some hand spun and things like that, but all different things and all different ways of playing with the yarn, playing with textures, playing with colors, everything is possible from here. And so I just wanted to show you that this is absolutely the simplest way to get started with weaving. This is with frame loom weaving, tapestry weaving, just something that holds your yarn in a fixed way under tension so that you can start putting some weft yarn through. Now, one thing as you're doing this kind of weaving is that you can take a, a stick like this. This is a, this is a pickup stick, um, might be called a weaving sword as well. Uh, the workshop that I went to, the instructor gave us these to use as pickup sticks. And this is basically um, one of those paint stirrers that you get from the paint store. Easy. like almost no money, right? And this one, you can go over, under, over, under. You just kind of weave this through all of your warp threads. Like so. And then you can leave this as you're working. You can leave this at the end. And then when you need to put your yarn through in this way, you just kind of flip, you take this stick and you just flip it up and you can see you've made a shed. You've made an opening of uh, the yarns and separated the warp yarns from each other. So you can see in here, there's like a little triangular shed. And so this is the beginning of what it is like to work with a different harness loom. So a rigid head of loom 
is set up so that way you can take your yarns and automatically flip up half of the yarns. Every other yarn will go up. And then when you change the, the shed on a rigid head of loom, the alternating yarns, the alternating warp yarns, every other one will then go down and then create the, the opposite shed. In this way with the tapestry loom, you only have this option to do it one way. And then when you need to do the yarns in the other way, when you need to insert your weft in the other direction, then you'll have to actually still weave over and under in that way. But you can, you can do this, this is very simple, or you can also buy a separate heddle, um, which you just pop in here and it will alternate which yarns go up and which yarns go down. So it's very similar in this idea, but this is the beginning of sort of understanding how weaving works and how different weave structures work. It's about choosing which yarns go up, which yarns go down. So if you don't wanna do every other yarn, maybe you're picking up uh, the first one and then the fourth one, and then the first one and then the fourth one. And so if we go in this pattern, then we're only picking up a few threads and leaving many more behind underneath and you're just picking up a few, this is again going to create different weave structures, different textures, different things in your fabric. And then if you get bored of weaving horizontal, sort of rectangular, square, straight edged items, you can pick up something like an embroidery hoop and take a yarn and warp your embroidery hoop. So that's it for now. I just wanted to share with you guys the absolute most fundamental things about weaving and trying to get started with weaving. I know that it can be very overwhelming, it can be very daunting and very intimidating when you hear about weaving and hear about all of the different equipment that's required. Think about reeds and heddles and dents per inch and ends per inch and there's just so many things to know, it's hard to know where to start. And so what I wanted to share with you guys was just the absolute most simple test to see if you would be interested in trying weaving. It's really just about interlacing a warp yarn and a weft yarn. In the School of Sweet Georgia, we're gonna be putting together more weaving content in the coming months. And so we're gonna be talking more about frame loom weaving, more about rigid heddle weaving, and more about my personal favorite, multi-shaft floor loom weaving. And I hope that you guys might be interested in joining us with your yarn stash, with all that yarn that you have. We can do something with it and make some cloth. Now, in the meantime, one of the other things that I wanted to mention to you guys is if any of you guys who are watching are actually interested in knitwear design, this is kind of off topic, <laughs> But if you guys are interested in knitwear design at all, Tabitha Hedrick, our design director, has put together a short little workshop about what it's like to present yourself as a knitwear designer and put together a proposal for submission, for design submissions. So if you are at all interested in submitting designs to us, we have sort of monthly patterns that go out and we have uh, seasonal collections as well, of seasonal collections of patterns. If you're interested in submitting to us or if you're interested in submitting to a magazine, I I really encourage you guys to uh, find Tabitha's workshop on the School of Sweet Georgia and she goes through the process of what you need to do to put together your proposal, what kind of sketch you need, what kind of swatch you need, what kind of schematics you need, what kind of descriptions you need, and then what happens through the process, how she selects designs and how you work with tech editors, how you work with sample knitters, test knitters, all of that kind of stuff. All of that's been packaged into a short little workshop. So you can, can join us there on the School of Sweet Georgia and that is a free offering that you guys can find there. So that is it for this week. We actually have lots of things to share with you in the next couple of weeks, but uh, March 12th is going to be the day that we launch our spring collection. So our spring patterns come out, spring colors come out, spring yarns, everything comes out on March 12th. And so I am going to be showing you guys all of those patterns coming out in a couple of weeks. But for now, I am in the middle of making lots and lots of weaving content for the school. So I hope to see you either in the school or on Instagram. You can find us there as Sweet Georgia. You can find me there as Felicia Lo Wong. And you can also find me there now as Low Meets Loom. And you can see what I'm weaving. <laughs> 
on that Instagram account. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do hit subscribe. And we come back every Friday with new content about the fiber arts. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye for now. Do it by your dog.